expect. I'm running a few minutes behind. And unfortunately, yet again, I do not have a camera operator. So we're doing this solo. That's gonna mean I will, of course, answer your questions, but they're all gonna be with the TLX Type S parked. Don't worry though, we will have plenty of driving content for you because I've got test drives and an in-depth review on this car coming. So don't worry about that. So to start, this is the 21 Acura TLX Type S. It's painted in Tiger Eye paint. It's a $500 option and that's $500 well spent to me. I think this color is fantastic. I'm gonna answer first the questions from the folks that are tuned in live. And I'll also filter in some questions that were asked on YouTube's community page and on Instagram. You can follow me there at miles per hour or TikTok, same thing at miles per hour. The room, Blake, I completely agree. So let's start with, uh, let's see, we got some questions coming in. Thank you, first of all, folks who are tuned in live. Thanks for jumping in and asking your questions. And I'll get to as many as I can, but of course, if you really want your question answered and you're not seeing me get to it, please consider doing a super chat. It really helps out the channel and you're definitely gonna get your question answered. So let's see, we'll start with uh, Tuxedo Black Cat. Thanks for joining, man. Uh, the first question you asked is, is it easy to drive? Yes, it's definitely easy to drive. It's gonna be, you know, even though it makes 355 horsepower and that's considerable performance, it is uh, very modular and so it's got a bunch of drive modes that you can use and comfort and normal mode are gonna be on the modest performance side and so you'll really be able to just kind of chime in. I'm gonna say some highs real quick. We've got Alex, hey, Miguel, hey, how's it doing? Larson family, Ben, Lomit, hey, how you, how you doing guys? Blake and James Bell, hey. Uh, so can you hear the exhaust note asked boost P1. Yes, I'll definitely start it up for you so you can hear that. Performance and horsepower asked the Larson family who is a miles per hour member. Thank you so much, Larson family, for your continued support. I really appreciate it. Let's see if I can center this a little better because we're a little off on the camera. This is hard to do one-handed, guys, because I'm holding some questions in this hand that I printed out. Because again, without a camera operator, it's a little challenging. But I'll start it up real quick and I'll see what I can do to let you hear the exhaust. It's just gonna be kind of at idle and then I will rev it just a little bit. Uh, another question that was asked uh, from Brown on Instagram community is if I can do a cold start in Sport Plus, unfortunately, I can't choose the drive mode before starting it, so I can't, uh, so I can't do a cold start in a specific drive mode. So I'm just gonna press the start stop button here and I'm gonna kind of start it up that way. And then I will change the drive mode here to Sport Plus. So you crank through the drive modes and then to go to Sport Plus, you have to crank and hold. And now I'll position the camera just outside and the mic just outside so hopefully you can hear it as best as possible. And here we go. So it's gonna cap me at 4,500-ish RPM. So what do we think of that? I, I think the exhaust note is, is good. It's not, you know, gonna blow out your eardrums. It's a, it's a turbocharged three liter V6. But, uh, but yeah, so that's the exhaust. And we'll leave the car running. I'll pop the hood for you. We can take a peek at the engine. Where's the hood release? Gotta find the hood release on this one. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the carbon fiber, James Bell, on that uh, the trim for the center area, that's actually a special option. I was worried it wouldn't have struts, but it does for the hood. So the, uh, the powertrain here is a three liter twin scroll turbocharged. So it's a single turbo, but it's a twin scroll turbo. V6, and it makes 355 horsepower, 354 pound feet of torque. It's connected to a 10 speed automatic gearbox, not a dual clutch. It's a torque converter automatic, and it's sourced from ZF. 
And so this car gets to 60 miles per hour. It's a, it's a super handling all-wheel drive is standard on this vehicle. It's a front-wheel drive based all-wheel drive system, but it can shuttle a bunch of the torque, I think up to 70% to the rear wheels. And so it will get to 60 miles per hour in four and a half seconds. Uh, just, uh, we've got a lot of questions coming in, guys. So I'm gonna, you know, if you want to super chat them, I would super appreciate it, but I'll, I'll try to filter in some as I can. Do I think, Aaron asks, another uh, miles per hour member, thank you so much, Aaron. Uh, do I think Acura is still a serious competitor to BMW slash Lexus, etc.? So still is an interesting word there because I think they've been trying for quite a while to catch up to those German competitors. And I think this is as good as the brand has looked. They had kind of a falling out for a number of years there in terms of their performance offerings. And now they're really coming back with their Type S models. This is the start of all the Type S models that are gonna be coming out. And so I think now more than ever, they are a better competitor to those German brands, BMW, Audi, Mercedes-Benz. Audi is gonna kind of be their first step up because BMW and Mercedes are a little bit higher off the ground than, than Audi. So, uh, so they, will be, uh, they will be competing with those. And they're doing a much better job now than they ever have before. Fuel economy was a question that was asked. It is 19 city, 24 highway, and 21 combined. Another question that was asked, and I gotta grab my sheet for this one. I wanna give credit for the question that was asked. Let's see, uh, Lomit asked how fast it is and how far it can go on a trip. So I didn't mention the top speed. Top speed is 151 miles per hour, and how far it can go on a trip. So it has a 15.9 gallon fuel tank here. And with that 21 combined MPG rating, that would put its overall range at something like 333 miles. So it can go yeah, fairly far, but not a crazy long trip because that tank isn't massive, 15.9 gallons. Hi, Diego. Let's see, so can I test the sound system? Unfortunately, I can't because I want the royalty-free music to do that, and Apple CarPlay on this system is not wireless. So I can't do that right now, but I will do that in my POV test drive, so don't worry about that. Show the sunroof, asks Gorov. It's not really a question, it's a command. I don't typically respond to commands, but I'll do it for you, don't worry. So let's see, the sunroof is right here, and you can either tilt it. This is yet another thing I will have in my POV drive, by the way. And then you can send it on back. And it's a pretty quick sunroof. That did not take long. Uh, another question just came in. Aaron Reichert asked what I think of the color, and Aaron is not the only person who has asked me about this color. I want to give credit again here on, let's see. Uh, the paint is beautiful. Kind of reminds me of the Austin yellow BMW used on the old M4. That was from Ferran. And let's see, who also asked about the color? Harsh asked for my thoughts on the color. And now Aaron is asking as well. I love the color. I think this color is fantastic. I agree with Ferran that I see a little of the old BMW M4's Austin yellow in this. However, this is even a bit more gold. That one, the Austin yellow was more on the yellow side. This is really like a strong gold color. And I think it's beautiful, even more so than the Apex Blue Pearl, another one of Acura's paint colors that I think is amazing and is only $500. So both this and the uh, Apex Blue Pearl are $500 and both are incredible colors, colors that you would have to pay quite a bit more money with other brands. Someone asked about reliability on here. Uh, the Larson family asked about reliability, Kia or Acura? That's a great question because Kia has really come a long way. Kia, Hyundai, they've come a long way in terms of their reliability. And I think those cars are gonna hold their reliability very well over the years to come. But Acura, obviously being the performance or the performance slash luxury brand of Honda. Honda has excellent reliability. They occasionally have some recall thing for as an example, their 1.5 turbo recently had a recall, but for the most part, their stuff is built very solid. I have a feeling this vehicle, certainly more so than its German competitors, is going to mean, remain very reliable. Its electronics are probably going to hold out a little better. 
not just the infotainment and stuff like that, but in terms of the ECU and, and other electronic things that, that sometimes plague those German vehicles. So I have a feeling the reliability of this car should be very good. Compared to Kia, I don't know, they're probably very close. Performance, that was a question from Amateur Apple. And uh, I kind of ran through that really quickly. So it's zero to 60 is four and a half seconds. Top speed is 151 miles per hour. I gave you the specs, 355 horsepower, 354 pound-feet of torque. Chelsea Trajeda asks, is it a good daily driver? So good time for me to say that I do have a full in-depth review coming out for this vehicle. So I'm not gonna give you my complete impressions. More I'm gonna talk about, first of all, answering questions about specs and things like that. And I'll say just in general, yes, it is a good daily driver. It's easy to drive and the powertrain is smooth, the fuel economy isn't that bad, and it's got all the tech you could ever need. So it's a, it's a good daily driver. I will go more in depth on that in the review. How's the interior, asked Mohammed. Yeah, so I only spent half a second in that interior. So I'll show you the rear area. And all interiors, this is a nice thing about the, the Type S, as compared to its rivals. That was a question I got a lot on uh, Instagram and YouTube's community page about the rivals. Uh, Steve, by the way, the, who's giving me the zero to 60 time, that comes from Acura. So that's, that's their quote on the zero to 60 times. So a lot of the rivals for this include the Audi S4, the BMW M340i, not the M3, not the full on M3. That car is well over 400 horsepower and then into 500 if you get the competition model. This is not competing with that car, it's competing with the M340i. It's an M Sport model. And then the Mercedes AMG C43, not the C63. So those are its competitors. Compared to those vehicles, this one, first of all, it's less expensive than everything except for the Audi S4. The Audi S4 is 50 grand to start. This is 53. This is fully loaded from the factory. So you don't have to kind of add any options except for the performance tires if you want them. It's uh, Pirelli P0s, I believe. Yeah, Pirelli P0s on these 20 inch wheels. That's $800, you know, not tons of money. That carbon fiber trim is a special option and the color, that's it. Everything else is loaded. So you're gonna get these leather and microfiber suede insert seats. The IS500, yes, Andre, that would be that would be an interesting competitor to this. That would kind of be in the same territory because it's not a full on M3 competitor. But these seats are just really nice. The leather is very nice. The suede inserts look good. You don't get anything like a third zone climb control back here, but you do get air vents. One touch windows all the way around. And you do get as standard, the Panasonic ELS Studio sound system. It's a 17 speaker sound system. It's a really great system. Power folding mirrors test please as brown. Okay, so let's do it. Power folding mirrors, here's the button here. Uh, I may have to be inside. I don't know if it's going to do with the door open. That air is also cranking right now, so I'm going to turn that down a little bit. So, pressing the door folding mirror button. Come in. Head on out. So that's the door mirrors. I think I got a horn test question from someone. Horn check was from Paul. Paul wanted to hear the horn. So here it is from inside. It's pretty loud, actually. Now, we are sort of in an echo chamber, and then I'll kind of just float this outside. Yeah, that's a loud horn. I'm kind of shocked at how loud that horn is. Uh, side mirrors auto dim. I do not believe they're auto dimming side mirrors. Uh, Larson family asks, what about this car would justify the 53 grand over $30,000 Kia, $23,000 difference? Uh, just, I mean, to run through things, the the features you do get in this car as standard are pretty solid. The Kia, even at $30,000, I'm imagining you're thinking the, the K5, you're still probably gonna have to add options to get into the K5 GT. And then I don't know if that one would be 30K straight up. And the performance of that car is not gonna be anywhere close to this. This is really more of a sporty driving experience from the steering feel and the brake feel and the power. So that's, that's kind of what you're paying for there. And also, I just think this car looks fantastic. 
But again, I'm not going to try to give away my full review, so be sure to watch that, Larson family. Is this car's gas mileage good or awful? So let's think about competitors for that, to answer that Tuxedo Black Cat. The fuel economy of this one is 21 combined. The C43s is 22. The M340i's is 23. And the Audi S4s, I think, 20, 20 or 21. So it's, it's not the best, certainly, but it's not terrible. No problem, Larson family. Uh, but I don't have in Thailand. Oh, I'm sorry, Anavin, that you don't have this one in Thailand because it's pretty cool. Are the floor mats an accessory? No, they, uh, these are standard floor mats. I don't know if we can see them. So you get the Type S badge on them, and that's a standard feature. Yet again, a lot of standard goodies on this car. Is the 2.0T enough power? So I imagine you're talking about just the regular TLX, Adi. This one has a 3.0. So uh, so this is definitely plenty of power. The 2.0T, watch my full TLX A-Spec review for an answer to that question. The Cadillac CT5V, yeah, the V, not the Blackwing, is a direct rival. Closer in size to this TLX, I think. Yeah, so the, the TLX is interesting because it's a little larger than a 3 Series or an A4. It's almost closer to the A6 size. But the CT5V would be another kind of direct rival to this. Can I be Frank Steve for once? Uh, asked Aaron. I'm not sure what that question means. Let's see. Can I test the performance claims? Mm, well, you can watch my POV test drive that I'll have coming out for this, and I will do a 0 to 60 in that one, and I don't time them, so you can just check for them. Can I sit in the back seat, asked Blake. Yes, I can definitely do that. Let's go do that. So this is my driving position at six feet tall. So I'm gonna climb behind it. I do have the seat back a little further necessarily than I, than I would in the angle mostly. So we'll climb in the back here. And let's look at that. So I've got uh, not a lot of knee room. The foot pockets are pretty narrow. So that's, that's kind of a complaint I have. I wish the foot pockets were taller. So, and Mike, I'm answering your question right now, but the leg room and things like that, it's, I wish the foot pockets were a little taller so I could decrease that knee angle a little bit. I'm wearing shorts, I'm not naked. And I, yeah, the leg room is, is on the tighter side with the seats pretty far back because this is a little further back than I would normally have it. So full size adults in the rear seats, it might be, might be kind of tight. Uh, let's see, what are the questions we have? Does Honda make any more vehicle brands other than Acura? No, it's just Honda and Acura. They have a whole bunch of, bunch of they've got Honda Power Sports, but they don't have any other brands. Can you set the power folding mirrors to lock when you lock the doors? Yes, Ricky, that is a, that is a, a setting in the infotainment. Fit and finish, quality, plastic, leather. So, Larson family, I'll leave, you know, a lot of that stuff for the in-depth review because that's getting into kind of the weeds of it, and that's... That's why I do those in-depth reviews. Would please see you sit in the back seat. Yeah, did that head-up display? It does, hang on, let me see. I can't remember if it does head-up display because I gotta go look. What do you guys think of the color? I'm just curious as we're standing outside for a sec. What do you guys think of the color? I love it. Does it have a head-up display? No, it does not. No head-up display. So that's something you are missing out on this. And the instrument cluster is not fully digital. You have a digital center TFT, but it's not a fully digital. Larson family, you love the color too. Glad. Brenson, you also love the color. Not for you, says Steve. Would you prefer, Steve, the Apex Blue Pearl? If you don't know what that looks like, watch my TLX A-Spec review. Yeah, Ricky agreed. No, no head-up display, no 360 camera. Yeah, that's... It's a bit unfortunate, but you don't have to pay extra for those. They're just not here. <laughs> uh, Tuxedo Black Cat loves the yellow. Looks like pancakes from IHOP. That's funny. Uh, with no syrup, says V6 Illust. That's funny. I, I got to look at it now. Now I'm going to think about that. Does the color looks like, look like pancakes from IHOP without syrup? What does that say actually about the pancakes from IHOP? Or do they look too artificial? Blue is better, says Steve, but I ordered white. Oh, Steve, you already ordered one. I can see white with the gunmetal wheels being a nice combo and the red brake calipers. That's, a, that's probably a clean spec. 
Uh, yeah, has no head-up display. Does it look low and wide in person? I read it's 75 inches wide. So let's go look at it from the front. So here at the front, so the way they sculpt this hood as it, you know, it's downturned, does this, and the creases are really sharp and they're pointing down. And so that is a visual cue and the headlights with the daytime running lights being so low with the chicane style daytime running lights, it definitely helps the vehicle look lower. And the grill, how it comes out low, helps it look wider and even the sculpting here, this kind of like angle there, makes it look wider as well. So it looks low and wide for sure. And the width can really be felt in the cabin. You feel like you've got plenty of hip room, even in the back seat. Again, it's just sort of like the leg room in the back seat is, is somewhat cramped. Cabin design is lacking in style compared to the competitors. Tech and style, thoughts? Uh, oh, and uh, quickly, Jebby, this is not a carbon fiber spoiler. Just, uh, just a painted black one. Do I think that the interior is lacking in style? Okay, so I'm, again, I got an in-depth review coming. We'll do, you know, that full thoughts on that. Off the cuff, I don't really think it lacks a ton when you think about the price point and what it's competing against. There's perhaps a little more, definitely not style. I think it's actually styled really well. Kind of this cool dashboard layout. I think that's good. The buttons can sometimes look a little cheap, like these here. And these for the climate control, these look a little cheap compared to kind of like BMWs or Mercedes buttons. But style, I don't think it's lacking any of that. Looks awesome in black, says Tony. I believe that. This color, Raisul, uh, if you're just joining, is Tiger Eye. Sorry about all the gardening happening behind us. Can you hear it idling in Sport Plus? So it's, it's right now in Sport Plus. I'll just come onto the back and I'll pull out the mic. Put it by the exhaust. I'm going to do it from over here so you hopefully don't hear as much of me. That's the idle in Sport Plus. Flip it back to me. Jebby, I'm so glad you enjoy this. You're very welcome. Uh, looks like a Lexus LS500. I don't really see it. I don't see... I don't see the Lexus in this. They're pretty distinct. The LS for, or the IS rather. What color is this? This is, again, Raisul, this is Tiger Eye. And also, uh, no, no spamming of questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you on a timeout. So what cars does the actual TLX compete against? Asked Tuxedo Black Cat. I've kind of got run over those. The TLX is going to compete against, you know, 3 Series, C-Class, Audi A4, uh, Cadillac, CT5. The TLX A-Spec specifically is going to jump up to the M Sport version of the 3 Series, the M340i. Then the, uh, the Audi S4, Cadillac CT5V, and the Mercedes-AMG C43. JR Preston, you think it sounds better than your 07 Type S? I do think it sounds good. Cool color for about 10 days, then it could get old. That's interesting, Drive CFL. I don't know. I this so I can see where you come with that. And and there are definitely colors that are have like a cool pop and you get all jazzed up about them and then they kind of get old. This one, I don't know if I feel that way, especially with a more modest cream colored interior. I think I could kind of live with this. And it does get lots of attention and lots of thumbs up. So if you if you like that, then that's good. I'm gonna hop back in and show you some of the interior once again. Hi everyone, how excited does it make you for the MDX type ask? Very, BG, if you saw my MDX review, I was sitting there going, man, this thing as like a type S would be so much more interesting. Is this the fastest Acura sedan? Right now, yes, it is the fastest Acura sedan. Uh, we'll get more attention for sure. Top speed, Raisul, the top speed is 151 miles per hour. If you missed that, I went through all the specs when we looked under the hood, including zero to 60, four and a half seconds, top speed of 151. Most just sedans just blend right in these days. I agree with you, which is why I think this color, for, the style is great, the color on top of that. When I read this car, it sounds like a GS350 F-Sport. Hmm, 
Well, I mean, that is a V6 powered car. I'm gonna rev it again, just for fun. So we're still in Sport Plus, by the way. So that's from here. I can't get to the back, unfortunately. I've not figured out a way to clone myself. Wish the dash leather matched the seats. Mm, okay, so that's interesting. They clearly went for a two-tone style, but you would have preferred it if this leather up here was the same color as the seats. I kind of, you know what? I kind of agree with you. I think if this top piece was in this cream color, it would add even more of a contrast than it just being black and then this cream color. Chief says, make another video of Lamborghini. Uh, as soon as they've got another model for me to test, right now I've kind of run through all of their latest stuff. That's too much white, says they admire. So that's funny. So that's a contrast to what I just said. Um, I was saying a little more, you know, of this cream color on top and then the black and then back to this, but you think that would be too much. So for an RDX Type S, doesn't make it so it doesn't cannibalize the TLX sales. Uh, I don't know. I think they would probably do it. I think they'd probably make an RDX Type S. I feel like T Type S's are going to come to all sorts of Audi models. Rolls Royce boat tail. If I could get access to that, I would definitely make a video on it. Was the cold start in the morning loud? No, Brown, it was not. It was kind of just a standard startup. Again, because I can't choose the Sport Plus drive mode to start up the car, you can only just choose whatever drive mode, the normal one, then it, it's not going to start up any louder than normal. Wish the Maxima was like this. Yeah, the Maxima needs to do some catching up. You're very well. You're very welcome for responding to the comments, Rysul. Happy to do it. Not sure you could live with the color, says Blake. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna split opinions. Some people are gonna love this color. Some people are gonna be like, uh, I can't deal with that on an everyday basis. It's too much. In that case, I would say like the Apex Blue Pearl would be the color for you because that one looks fantastic, but it's it's sort of just a blue and blues are very common. Aaron Miles, there you go. A Miles last name, love it. Do you think the Type S should have been 400 horsepower? No, because that's not really what this vehicle is to Acura. If they made a Type R, that one I would expect over 400 horsepower. That would be that would be out know, getting towards like an M3 rival, proper M3 rival. But this this car, the Type S for them has always been just a bit of a step up in terms of performance while not trying to be the most aggressive, the, the highest performance model out there. Love the wheels and headlights, says Aaron. I completely agree with you. The wheels look great. They're 20 inch wheels. So as standard, it comes with 19s. If you get the summer performance tire, then it'll upgrade you to the 20s. And this wheel design is awesome. It comes straight from the NSX and you get the red brake calipers. It looks really cool. And the headlights also look super sick. They call this design chicane effect. It's like a check mark with some style at the end. Why is the boat tail so expensive? Asks Rittick. Uh, because they can. Because Rolls Royce can charge whatever they want and people who have that much money will just pay for it. Do I think the front side of the car looks like a Mustang? No, I think no part of this car looks like a Mustang. And that's a good thing. I like the Mustang, but Keep the Mustang looking like a Mustang and this looking like this. What color is this, Nicholas? You must just be joining us. This is the Tiger Eye Pearl. It's a $500 paint color. I think it looks great. How are the paddle shifters? Ugh, a little underwhelming. I'll hop back inside. One to just escape all of that noise from the leaf blowing. So here are the paddle shifters. I'm gonna try to get the camera around to them. Move over, move over. Okay, so here are the paddle shifters and they feel like real aluminum. There's a little bit of travel, but they're kind of dinky in size. They're not very large and they don't feel super high quality. So I wish the paddles were a little bit better and I wish there was just a straight up manual mode. There is no manual mode. There's just drive and sport powertrain. To go to manual mode, you have to pull the paddles, but after a while, if you're not pulling the paddles, It'll go back to automatic. Uh, it isn't based on the Civic, no. Let's see, is this my favorite car? No, this is not my favorite car. Would I mod this car? That's a good question. 
Chris, though, would I mod this car? And I want to answer that by looking outside of it and just thinking if it would look better dropped at all. Mm, no, I don't think I would touch it, to be honest. If you wanted to get a little more power out of the 3-liter V6, sure, maybe if you wanted a twin-turbo setup. But honestly, like, here's the thing about factory performance cars are they do so much work on getting them dialed up to ride a certain way to handle a certain way that when you modify them there's just even if the aftermarket supplier has done so much research it's never going to feel quite as buttoned up as from the factory which is my favorite car asks Ratik. that's so my favorite car the car i would love to own one day is a 2005 ford gt that's it. That's the dream car for me. Favorite car I've driven would be the McLaren 765LT. Put it on bags and add a wrap to it. I don't know. I don't think it needs a wrap because I think the color is really cool. Uh, performance mod, not styling because it looks good. Okay, yeah, so you want, you want performance mods. Again, I'll say the way it performs now, all the research that Acura and Honda did, Acura through Honda, uh, to make it drive the way it does, they can't, they can't really replicate that with performance. Does it have launch control? No launch control on this one. Somebody looking at this versus the M340i, which would I choose? I'll save my verdict, my official verdict, for, uh, for, when, um, for when I do the in-depth review. But I will say that is a competitor. This one makes less power than that. The M340i makes 382 horsepower. This makes 355. It's less expensive. This one starts at around $53,000. The M340i X-Drive starts at $57,500. Fuel economy is a little worse than this. Do I have a girlfriend? No, I've got a wife. She's wonderful. Christina used to uh, be the camera woman for these live Q&As, but then we had a daughter. So we're, she's looking after our daughter right now. What's the top engine speed? It's 151 miles per hour. Looks, lights look like a Lamborghini Urus. Hmm. I don't know. I'm thinking about the Lamborghini Urus. I don't know. I'm, I'm imagining you're meaning the headlights. So the thin LED daytime running lights is something that's done by a lot of cars. So I guess that maybe, but it doesn't really, the design doesn't look exactly like an Urus to me. Looks like a Porsche Taycan. The headlights you mean? Mm, I don't see that either. Do I know Doug DeMiro? Yes, I know Doug DeMiro. He, in, before he, he did, you know, all his Doug stuff, he was just an automotive journalist like myself. Okay, let's see. Other questions we have, otherwise, we're probably gonna wrap it up because I can't drive it. I'm uh, just riding this solo, no camera operator. What is the attention like on this color versus the Apex Blue Pearl? Brown, that's a great question. And honestly, I think this color gets more attention. So if you're kind of like one, like me, frankly, who doesn't want tons of attention in your car, you're going to want to go Apex with Pearl because that's still an amazing color. Oh, BG, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, and I, I'm, so to continue with that question, this color gets more attention than the Apex Blue Pearl, but the Apex Blue Pearl is still a fantastic color. And if you're not big on attention, then you may prefer that. You'll get to drive a Porsche Taycan? As a teenager, wow, must be nice. This has power folding mirrors, right? Yes, Jeffrey, I, I showed those a little earlier, so definitely watch earlier in this live Q&A to see the power folding mirrors in action. It's a, it, so, just sun. sorry for, for mispronouncing that. Um, the color is tiger eye pearl, and yeah, it, it looks very much like a rich gold. I love it. Hello from England, says Edgar. Who would you say were the direct competitors for this car? Love my content. Thank you so much, Edgar. So the direct competitors for this vehicle are gonna be the BMW M340i, the Audi S4, Mercedes AMG C43, and Cadillac CT5V. Size-wise, the TLX Type S is slightly larger than the S4 and M340i and C43, closer in size to the CT5V, and even closer in size to an Audi A6, but, it's really lined up price-wise and performance-wise to those cars. Not lined up against a you know, full-on M3 or when Audi made it an RS4. Is this car fuel-efficient or Mercedes-AMG uh, C63? Is this car fuel-efficient? 
went over the, the fuel economy a little earlier, Ryan, but it's 21 combined from 19 city and 24 highway. The fuel economy is worse than the regular TLX, which was 24 combined, and is a little worse than its main competitors. <laughs> uh, Bryson base model 2002 Honda Civic. That's, that's what's up. I drove an old Chevy Suburban. That was my first car. What cars can this vehicle beat? Tuxedo Black Cat asks. Uh, beat how? Do you mean in, in zero to 60, in top speed? Zero to 60, you think about the competitors, it's, it's not quicker to 60 than any of those vehicles I just mentioned. However, it's still quicker to 60 than a lot of the cars you're gonna see on the road. It's quicker than a you know, Honda Civic or a, or a, a Hyundai Sonata or you know any of the, the average sedans out there, it's gonna be quicker than those. G70 Stinger, Q50 Red Sport competitors too. Those would also be competitors, yeah. So I haven't driven the new G70, gonna get that one soon, and I'll have more thoughts. I have driven the Kia Stinger, that would be another you know, key rival to this. The Stinger is a little even larger than this. Q50 Red Sport, yeah, that would be a competitor too. I like the Red Sport a lot. The, the performance, the steering and handling of, of this car is, is, high, is better than the Q50 Red Sport. Can I show the interior? Nat lyrics. I did show a bit of it earlier. I'll show you the back seats again and then the front. So you've got a mix of leather and suede for the seat inserts. Some harder plastics on the seat backs. Injection molding up here, then leather here for the door inserts. Show the front. Once again, we got leather with this really nice contrast piping on it. Perforation, they're heated and ventilated seats up front. The horsepower, uh, once again, is 355 horsepower and 354 pound-feet of torque. So this is sort of the interior. You have this perforated leather-wrapped steering wheel. It's got a flat bottom to it. This one has optional carbon fiber inserts. I don't know the specific price of those. I'm waiting for Accurate to get back to me, actually, about how expensive those are. But that's not a standard thing. Black seats would have looked better. I kind of disagree. I don't typically love a black interior. I feel like it needs a little more pop to me. It gets kind of boring. I'm gonna show you the engine. And we'll recap those specs. Three liter, single turbo V6. Oh, Can-Am. Can-Am! Three liter, turbo, V6. Single turbo, it's a twin scroll, single turbo. It makes 355 horsepower, 354 pound-feet of torque, connected to a 10-speed automatic gearbox. Zero to 60 for this all-wheel drive vehicle is four and a half seconds. Top speed, 151 miles per hour. All right, guys, I think we're probably gonna wrap it up there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, this, this color, for those who are curious, Tiger Eye Pearl, it's a beautiful color. Apex Blue Pearl, kind of up there with me between that and this for colors of this. This is the TLX Type S. I've got a full in-depth review coming, POV test drive coming, night drive, all the good stuff. So look forward to that. Thank you again so much for tuning into the live Q&A and I will see you guys again next time.